Benzaldehyde I'm using for reaction A is Loran Oils uh, Super Strength Almond Flavor. Now this is supposed to be just crushed almonds and the juice or the oil that comes from that is collected and it's mostly um, benzaldehyde, okay? So it does have significant amounts of uh, the other natural products present in the almond as well as benzoic acid, which forms in significant amounts from the air oxidation of benzaldehyde. So I'm going to uh, purify a bit of that. Um, I'm, I'm going to go for uh, 10 milliliters here, and I need seven and a half milliliters for my reaction. So I think 10 should be fine to work off of. So I'll actually just add 10 milliliters directly to here. And what we're going to do is uh, wash or extract this with uh, saturated sodium bicarbonate. that was 10. If it's only nine, that's fine too. Uh, I got this off of eBay, so this is commercially available, uh, you know, okay, so it's, uh, that's the product information there. So I'm going to add 20 milliliters of saturated sodium bicarbonate, and this will be sufficient to depropionate the benzoic acid and by Le Chatelier's principle, principle, drive it to the conjugate base. Now, benzoate is going to be um, an ion, and that's going to be soluble in water. So um, the water is the bottom layer here. I'm just going to do one washing with this. Okay. let that go there and uh, I don't unfortunately have a distillation apparatus or a vacuum distillation set up to uh, purify this by vacuum distillation but we'll let this uh, very strongly um, smelling substance here separate I'll get the oil layer I'll measure out seven and a half milliliters and I'll proceed to the reaction I've waited about three minutes here and the layers have separated so I'm going to go ahead and dispense the lower aqueous layer into this flask so I can uh, discard that. And the upper organic layer should contain benzaldehyde. And this is a very rough purification step just to uh, make sure we have a more pure product, more pure benzaldehyde to work with. Now I'm not gonna dry the organic layer because the reaction is carried out in an aqueous reaction mixture. So I'm just gonna dispense this uh, benzaldehyde now in here. I can see even more droplets of water forming on the bottom there as it continues to separate. All right, so let's go ahead and dispense this into here. And it uh, looks like significantly less material. Um, let me now measure out seven point five milliliters of purified benzaldehyde.
All right, definitely not the best way to use the graduated cylinder there, but um, we have 7.5 milliliters of benzaldehyde. So again, this comes from the Loran oils lot, okay? So now we'll take you over to the reaction and get that going. Okay, uh, here's the information about our catalyst that we're using, thymine hydrochloride. And uh, there's some information there about the molar mass and formula weight. And we're supposed to now, in a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, add 1.3 grams of the catalyst thymine hydrochloride here. Okay. And then we are asked to add four milliliters of water distilled water okay so it does go all into solution if you wait a while and um, then what you're supposed to do is add 15 milliliters of 95 percent ethyl alcohol so I'm using uh, you know stuff you could buy at the store there Okay, denatured alcohol. Okay, so 95% alcohol would be, you know, 0.75 milliliters less alcohol and more, a little bit 0.75 milliliters more water, but I'm just gonna use pure um, denatured alcohol here. So I'm gonna add 15 milliliters of this um, to this uh, flask here. Okay. Still homogeneous, which is a uh, good sign there. I'm going to cool this in an ice bath here that I have set up. Okay. Just for a while, not too long. It's not too serious. And uh, then what I'm going to do is slowly and dropwise add two and a half milliliters of three molar sodium hydroxide that I have here prepared. We're doing this dropwise so that it won't heat up and um, get too high in temperature. So. Two and a half milliliters there, so I'll just kind of swirl it around while I add this dropwise. Okay, you can see the color has deepened, intensified to a uh, bright yellow. All right. Now that we have the sodium hydroxide mixed with the thymine hydrochloride and we've made the active form of the catalyst, um, we're going to add our 7.5 milliliters of benzoic benzaldehyde to the solution. And um, that's it. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and Dump this in there. Somewhat of a viscous oil, so I uh, just want to give it some time for the last remaining bits of material to come through. OK. 
found. I'll give that a, a good swirl or so. I'm gonna cap this with a cork. Um, I, ideally, you should wrap this in some parafilm to keep this um, oxygen free. Uh, I, I do believe this, this cork is very tight fitting. Okay. It's very cold, so I'm, I'm, I don't think it got really that hot during the addition of sodium hydroxide. And we're gonna let this sit until the next laboratory period. I'll uh, check in on it and I'll see when there might be precipitation occurring. Um, the product uh, forms a solid in this reaction uh, mixture and it precipitates from solution, so. So that's it. Uh, I'll see you back in a week or so when we analyze this and see if we succeeded. Once again, this lot of um, oil is what we're using, the Loran Oils brand, and it's presumably 100% almond oil that has not been diluted uh, with any other uh, additives. Okay. Thanks for watching. Okay, here are the results from my uh, benzoin condensation. Remember again, we had two of these uh, oils that were purchased off of eBay. Uh, we've got the Loran oils on the left, and we've got this thing from um, Traverse uh, Bay Bath and, and Body, okay, Traverse Bay. So um, they both yield uh, sufficient quantities of crystals. The reaction on the left here uh, produced a little bit of a yellow supernatant. Um, and we're asked to cool this on ice for 15 minutes and then do vacuum filtration here. Uh, the Traverse Bay product uh, seemed to produce more fluffy uh, crystals and uh, similar, similar results there with a kind of a yellowish um, supernatant. And we're also supposed to, you know, just chill these for 15 minutes. So I'll bring you back after about 15 minutes and then we'll uh, do the vacuum filtration here. All right, so uh, let's do the analysis of the uh, Loran oils. And so I've got my uh, reaction here that's been 15 minutes in the ice bath. And uh, we'll set up our uh, sidearm flask here. We'll attach the vacuum tubing to the side. And our Buchner funnel here. We'll uh, <clears throat> dampen the filter paper with this chilled mixture of 50-50 alcohol water that I placed in the, uh, the freezer there. And I'll use this as the uh, wash solvent to wash the crystals that I collect here. Oftentimes, um, the reaction produces so many crystals it's hard to even get them out of the flask so I've got a spatula to assist me with that. Let's get this vacuum going here with the water aspirator. <clears throat> Good enough I believe and we're set to go. Sometimes they're all kind of clumped in there as a rock, so I like to uh, kind of stir them around to uh, get them distributed there. And in one fell soup, we'll just uh, dump that on in there. So remember again, we're not just filtering uh, unreactive starting material, sodium hydroxide, but we're also getting rid of any of that catalyst that we added. So I'll add some ice cold ethanol water here. Okay. And I will rinse the crystals here. Okay.
this on for a second. Make sure all the crystals have a chance to interact with this uh, cold, ice chilled alcohol water here before I turn the vacuum on for the last time. Seeing a lot of oil down in here in the in the uh, Erlmeyer flask, and I think that might be unreactive benzaldehyde or perhaps oils that were added to this um, to dilute the almond oil extract. We'll let this air dry uh, five minutes, and then we'll let it sit to uh, air dry, uh, you know, until the next lap period. Okay. So no need to hang around and watch me on that. I'm gonna label this uh, and put it onto a watch glass so you'll know that this is the Loran Oils Catalyzed Reaction, okay? Okay, I'm here at the balance. Um, let's turn this guy on and make sure it's all zeroed out correctly. And we're gonna weigh this watch glass here. And of course you subtract the weight of the watch glass from the final so you get the mass of only the, the product. And I've labeled this LO to help us remember this is the Loran oils reaction, okay? So uh, I'll put this on the balance here. And as we're just measuring simply the weight of the empty watch glass, okay? So that's the mass for the uh, LO watch glass. Now what I'll do is transfer the not yet dry benzoin onto the watch glass. And uh, these usually form very fluffy crystals. Uh, and I'll show you the uh, morphology of these crystals after it's uh, all dry. Right now it's uh, might have a little bit of alcohol remaining on the crystals and perhaps any oil that the factory decided to add in. All right, so we'll just let this uh, air dry until the next uh, laboratory period. I like to spread the crystals out a little bit, but not too much in danger of spilling over the sides. And uh, We'll just let this air dry until the next laboratory period. So that's the LO or Loran oils product.